What makes scary nights 10 times scarier? The knowledge that demons and the devil will be in appearance. Hi, hi, I'm V, and today I'll be telling your curious craniums about the top five scary cults that summon the devil on Halloween. Number five, the cult of Dionysus. The cult of Dionysus has sparked dark speculations and controversies over many years. It's a highly secretive organization, and knowing what exactly occurs within the privacy of members is unknown. Just to list a few of the many theories, here are some of the dark speculations and controversies surrounding the cult of Dionysus. Quote, Excess and madness. The cult celebration of intoxication and ecstasy led to accusations of excess and madness. Critics argue that the excessive consumption of wine and the frenzied behavior of cult participants could lead to a breakdown of societal order and morality. Moral and social disruption. Many in the ancient world viewed the Bacchanalian and Dionysian festivals as a threat to established social norms. The rejection of traditional roles and the temporary suspension of societal rules during these festivals raised concerns about moral and social disruption. Bodily liberation. Some Dionysian rituals were associated with liberation and promiscuity. Some believed that these practices would lead to licentious behavior and the erosion of traditional family structures. Foreign influence. The cult of Dionysus was often associated with foreign influence and was viewed with suspicion by those who feared the introduction of foreign beliefs and practices into their culture. Accusations of political subversion. In some instances, the cult was seen as a potential threat to political stability. Rulers and authorities worried that the Dionysian festivals could be used as a cover for political subversion or rebellion. Mystery and secrecy. The secret and exclusive nature of some Dionysian rites gave rise to speculations and conspiracy theories. The mystery of religion aspect of the cult fueled rumors and concerns about what might be happening behind closed doors. Tragedies and harm. The association of Dionysus with tragedy in Greek drama led to the belief that participation in Dionysian rituals could result in real life tragedies and harm. End quote. Though the speculations likely do hold some truth, being able to definitively answer whether any or all of these theories are true is impossible. Records of the cult's activity were often exaggerated through misunderstandings or misinterpretations of the cult's practices. But it is thought that many of the rituals have been spotted throughout history, hinting that the cult may not be as inactive as many think. Number four, the Blackburn Cult. May Otis Blackburn's cult, which is referred to with many names, including the Order of the Doves and, of course, the Blackburn cult, was a controversial religious movement that emerged in Los Angeles, California. The cult's beliefs and practices were described as a combination of mysticism, apocalyptic prophecies, and unorthodox spiritual teachings. The cult was unofficially founded in the early 1920s, centering its teachings on the notion that May Otis Blackburn, their leader and founder, was a chosen prophet, selected by divine forces to guide followers through the impending end of the world. May claimed to receive direct revelations and instructions from angels and other spiritual entities. She warned her followers to prepare for the looming apocalypse, leading them into believing that only they would be saved from the cataclysmic events she spoke of. The beliefs also included select sections of witchcraft and mysticism, which actually led to legal troubles for May Otis Blackburn and her followers. In 1929, she, along with her son Raymond, faced a high-profile trial in which they were accused of practicing witchcraft and defrauding their followers. The trial received significant media attention and portrayed the cult as a group of radicals who manipulated their members for personal gain. May Otis Blackburn was a writer also. She produced numerous books and pamphlets to spread her religious doctrines and apocalyptic visions. These writings played a crucial role in spreading her teachings and attracting new converts to the Order of the Doves. Despite the cult's strange practices and legal challenges, it managed to gather a following during its existence. However, the relentless scrutiny from the law surrounding a certain body found under a house frequented by the cult and disturbed opinions from the public ultimately led to its disbandment. May Otis Blackburn's life took a quieter turn after the cult's disillusion, and she passed away in 1951. But to this day, it's not known certainly whether there are still practicing members, whether it be people who grew up in the cult or those whose parents raised them under the set of 
believes. Number three, Order of Nine Angels. The Order of Nine Angels, or the ONA, is one of the most mysterious and highly controversial groups in the world of modern Satanism and the occult. The ONA was founded in the UK in the 1960s, promoting extreme and often dangerous forms of Satanism. Its core beliefs and practices are complex and unconventional, which has led to bouts of intense debate and controversy from Satanists and non-practicing communities alike. The heart of their philosophy is the concept of the sinister tradition, which is a radical committed path that encourages members to challenge societal norms and embrace chaos and darkness. They view Satan as a symbol of rebellion against the established order, advocating for personal transformation through dark and sometimes harmful experiences. One of the most notorious aspects of the ONA is its advocacy for culling, a term they use to describe acts of harm and even homo sapien sacrifice. Some of the ONS's writings are extremely dark and grossly disturbing, further demonstrating their deeply antisocial and extremist perspective. While they remain a highly secretive, tight-knit, and controversial group, their writings and philosophy have managed to spread widely and even found their way into other areas of the occult, impacting various forms of alternative spirituality. The Order of the Nine Angels remains a fringe and extremist organization to this day. Their beliefs and practices are widely criticized and condemned for their proud and loud promotion of harm and extremism. As with any belief system, it's important to approach their beliefs with caution and to be aware of the potential harm and danger it can pose, especially if it's taken to the extreme. Number two, Sashiko Ito. The bizarre and disturbing saga of Sashiko Ito, the woman who would come to be known as the drumstick killer, began in 1990. It all started when her husband suffered a back injury, which not only incapacitated him, but also led him down a very dark path of drinking and gambling, which ended up pushing the couple into very deep debt, which eventually forced them to sell their home and move to a different town. In their new town, they became involved with a religious group, which was deeply involved in spiritual faith healing. But their involvement involvement didn't last long because they used the organization's name without permission and were expelled. This led to Edo's husband experiencing a mental breakdown and disappearing without a trace in 1992. With her husband gone, the descent into her heinous actions began. She moved approximately 100 miles north of Tokyo and started performing spiritual healings. Edo proclaimed that she was a healer and a psychic, gradually making increasingly grandiose claims. She eventually declared herself a god who possessed the power to draw drive demons out of people. These statements quickly attracted a large following of devotees who flocked to her for services. Edo's cult grew quickly, with over a dozen believers and their family members living in her home and participating in rituals. Her rituals, involving drumstick beatings meant to end the dirty body and purify the soul, quickly escalated in aggression. She accused some of her followers of being possessed by a bad fox and had them beaten until they were hardly alive. In June of 1995, less than three years Years after Edo moved, one of Edo's followers was hospitalized with severe injuries from a ritual. This follower also reported that her husband had abruptly disappeared after visiting Edo's house. This raised suspicions and led the police to search the premises, where they uncovered a truly horrific scene. Six decomposing bodies, two men and four women were discovered, some mummified and wrapped in futons. All of their lives were ended due to the harm inflicted during Edo's rituals. Edo, her daughter, and a man named Yutaka Nomoto and another follower were arrested and charged with the deaths. Edo's survivor, who had reported the cult, was also arrested. Edo initially claimed that the deaths were unintentional and were simply a part of a religious exorcism. The trial resulted in Edo receiving a life-ending sentence, while her accomplices received prison sentences ranging from 18 years to life. On September 27, 2012, at the age of 65, Edo was hanged after several unsuccessful appeals, hopefully ending the belief system that she created, but no one's quite sure. Number one, Temple of the Black Light. The Temple of the Black Light, which can also be referred to as the Misanthropic Luciferian Order, MLO, which is what I will be calling it because it's the shortest name. The MLO is a group associated with left-hand path spirituality and philosophy. MLO was founded in Sweden in the early 1990s, and it has gained popularity in cult theorists for its unique approach to Satanism and the left-hand path. The central notion of the MLO is the self-created worship that they call Chaos Gnostic Satanism. What sets them apart from many other satanic groups 
Amelo's beliefs are rooted in a drastic form of nihilism and a deep desire to embrace chaos, darkness, and spiritual rebellion. Honestly, real. They believe in an intangible force called chaos, which they see as a destructive, creative, and transformative entity that has great power and aims to oppose the order and constraints of the universe. MLO's members revere Lucifer as a symbol of enlightenment, liberation, and defiance against traditional religious and societal norms. However, their interpretation of Lucifer is much different from popular depictions of him. To them, Lucifer represents a dark and chaotic force that opposes established religion and and the moral codes of society. The MLO is known for its extreme and often controversial writings, which explore the esoteric beliefs of the religion in depth. Their texts often feature highly complex and cryptic symbolism, which is intended to be understood by those who are deeply committed to the group's philosophy and not for those outside. I mean, that's a good way to reject skeptics. Like if skeptics were like, dude, this text doesn't make any sense, the members could just say, yeah, well, duh, you wouldn't get it. You can't sit with us. The Temple of the Black Light is considered a highly controversial group within the broader satanic community as well. They are criticized for their extremist and nihilistic views, as their beliefs are not an accurate representation of traditional satanic traditions and beliefs, which normally encompass a wide spectrum of beliefs and practices. The Temple of the Black Light actually remains a small and secretive group that's still active to this day. That brings us to the end of today's video. Would you ever consider joining any of these cults? I mean, I'm all for individuality and freedom, but I think that some of these guys may have taken it, you know, just a, just a tad too far. Let me know what you think. I'll be including my favorite comment in an upcoming video, so leave a good one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and of course, I hope you learned something new. Keep it curious, cuties. Bye.